Today's spookerific review, we're going to be having a look at the Rubies, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger Deluxe Glove Replica. I decided to pick this up again for 2018, even though I'm certain this is the exact same Freddy Krueger deluxe glove from Ruby's that I've looked at before on this channel. As I had mentioned when we had a look at the Morbid Enterprises Nightmare on Elm Street syringe glove, I wanted to kind of get into a tradition maybe every single year, checking out the Spirit Halloween stores in my local area and picking up the outings, the offerings of Freddy Krueger gloves for that year. Now, even though I know looking at this one right here, it's probably going to be the exact same glove as I looked at before. You can even go back and have a look at my previous review of the Freddy Krueger deluxe glove from Ruby's, and you'll probably see, yes, it is in fact or more likely, in fact, the exact same glove, but we're going to look at them hopefully maybe every single year and see if they may change at all. I've got it very crudely put onto my mannequin hand, which I realized the limitations of putting this on the hand because the hand is already pre-posed. Well, let me just show you. I'm going to take this off. Just kind of wedge it off of the hand. The hand is pre-posed as it normally should be for a mannequin hand. So it's very difficult at times to get, especially like the really cheap gloves wedged over the finger. So a lot of times I'll just kind of prop it on top. We'll just move that out of the way. I think somebody had asked me where I got that mannequin hand from. I got it off of eBay. And here we have the deluxe version of the Ruby's glove. Now, to kind of put things in perspective, price points for all of these, there's the basic class, which you'll know right off the bat which one that is. That is the one that has the gray, very matte gray plastic blades on the top. It looks very crude. It's, it's all brown. Then you've got the deluxe version glove, which is this one that we're looking at right now. And uh, then there's also the, uh, the higher grade glove, which is about $100, and it has the metal plates as well as the metal blades. This one just happens to be plastic. And this one will cost you about $35 if you were picking this up in the store. If you were ever to pick up a glove like this in the store, I would definitely say in store is the best place to put it and pick it up and not pick it up online because then you're certainly at the mercy of shipping. I realized this very quickly ordering from Spirit Halloween, which only apparently has the .com option, doesn't have the .ca option. So I had to pay the initial price in US dollars, conversion rate, the brokerage rate, and the shipping charges, and uh, it got a little expensive. So luckily I was able to find this glove in local stores. And we'll have a look at it now. Even though it, there's not really a whole lot to be said for it, I think it is in fact the exact same glove that we looked at in previous instances. Right off the bat, what you're getting is a very cheap looking glove. The material is kind of a combination between like a faux leather. It's probably the cheapest faux leather you could possibly find. And uh, you've also got this material that feels very close to being like a, a felt. It's ripped in the opened area of the palm. And uh, you can see that they just simply slapped paint on it. There's no real rhyme. There's no real reason. There's just like a two dollops of paint right there. And then just this line of paint right there. I mean, like looking at it, it kind of looks like a happy face or a, like a, a ghost face. And then you can see the fingers are, the gloves of the fingers are through the, uh, the caps of the blades here. Now, this part is a very, like I said, very cheap plasticky material with the felt on the inside. And then the outside is just plates. There's obviously the main hand plate and then the sectional plates making up of the fingers. This uh, looks like it's been cast in a black plastic. And then they've just done a very haphazardly job of 
just slapping paint on it with the real, like I said, no rhyme, no real reason. There's a little cording at the bottom, but you can see that like there's, there's no specifics to the way that they did this glove will vary to, you know, from glove to glove. They won't be consistent with one another. Just depends on what they decided to do on this glove versus what they did on the next glove in like the, the concession, the, uh, the actual line there. Um, as for the, this part of the blades, this section here is a little closer to looking like the main plate. When you get to this part, however, the paint seems to very drastically change and it almost looks as if they used a shinier plastic here than they did here, or something is different here because the, this part looks very different from the mid knuckles of the fingers. As for the blades themselves, the blades are also plastic. So there's, there's very little durability to these. You wouldn't want to be hitting this against the wall. You would very quickly break these. And it looks like they've put uh, probably like a, a metallic reflective, almost like chrome tape over top of it. I can't imagine that it's the plastic itself. It's probably something, yeah, you can see a little seam line right there where they've just applied like the tape over top of the blades. I mean, it's reflective and it gives a nice little, you know, reflection of light, whatever light is hitting it. But uh, again, it just feels like a really, really cheap, cheap glove. I seem to think that when I was younger, there were better Freddy Krueger gloves on the market, but there must, maybe there wasn't. Maybe this is as good as it really got. Uh, I doubt very likely that they were like metal versions of these. They were mo most often, if, if not be just plastic. But let's go ahead and get this on the, the old hand. I don't know if this has changed, but I, I feel as if the elastic that goes around the bottom of the glove is a little tighter than it was the, the last time I looked at this. And I think I looked at this glove, I want to say last year, but it may have not been last year's model, if that makes any sense, because I ordered them online because the gloves simply weren't available in stores. But I do feel like this part right here is a little on the tighter side. The glove itself, to its credit, even though it's made of a really cheap material, at the very least, unlike the syringe glove, I can actually open and close each of the fingers. I can close, open and close the pinky, the index, the middle finger, the pointer finger, and the thumb. Of course, the thumb doesn't have anything on it. I can close my fists, I can open, close my fingers, I can open up my hands, my fingers, and uh, everything is very responsive. One of the benefits of this also being a lighter plastic glove, it's a little bit easier to move and manipulate each of the in individual fingerlings that make up the top plates. The only thing, the only detriment I suppose to it is just the quality and the paint. The paint is really disastrous on this. Um, even like the bottom of the glove here, you can see that there's just like, you know, little lines of black paint. Again, no rhyme, no real reason, but, but one benefit of getting a glove like this for all the negatives I may have said over the course of this video so far is that it's made of a cheap plastic. It's very affordable. This glove will cost you about, like I said, it was only, I think it was like 35, 34, $35. I did a, a walkthrough of the Spirit Halloween store and we had a look at that over the course of that video. But it's about $34 to get this glove for yourself. I keep doing this because I find this one finger plate right here doesn't sit inside it keeps catching keeps catching on the blade these these ones are fine this one's okay this one's okay this one right here gets stuck i'm wondering if there's just a little bit of excess paint right on the inside there i may want to just file that away of course as i'm doing this paint is flaking off frequently um, especially these areas right here, this is where all the paint's kind of chipping off and leaving a residual kind of all over the backdrop. But as I was saying though, with this being a really affordable glove, the only thing it would really require for you to do is to get the glove and then of course just do a little, a little bit of touch-up paint work. At least it's got the building blocks in place. It's got a functional glove. The plates are, you know, of course, the right size. The, the blades are a good length. You would just need a little bit of extra paint to kind of go in there and touch up some of this area. Get rid of this color and make it a little bit more accurate to how it was in the movie. I don't know what you could really do with the glove. You may be able to paint it, but it would have to be like a fabric paint, something that's got a little bit of give to it, because if not, the paint would just start chipping when you were moving your hands. But if you could stain the glove a little bit of a darker color, 
and then simply go in and just touch this up. You could get a pretty accurate looking Freddy Krueger glove at a pretty affordable price. So that's one good way, one good thing about the deluxe glove. It's made of cheap enough materials that you're you're not having to spend a whole lot to get a glove. You may just have to go in and spend some extra time to fix this up though. Picking up this glove for yourself, you're not really gonna get a movie accurate glove, but what you are gonna get though is a really decent starting canvas if you wanna customize this and make this a little bit more screen accurate. Kids immediately can pick this up and wear it. And uh, one good thing about either getting it for a kid or picking it up as an adult is they're really affordable gloves. This one, the middle tier gives you sort of the best of both worlds. It's made of really cheap material. And I have to stress this, really cheap plastic and really cheap fabric that they use for the glove. But it's affordable at about $34 to $36, depending on where you're going to find it. It's one of the more affordable looking gloves that still is functional. I wouldn't probably get the basic glove. In fact, this year I wasn't even going to plan on looking at the basic glove because it's really on the cheap level. It's, it's borderline dollar store. This glove is at least workable that if you want to just immediately get a packaging and put it on your hand, it looks enough like Freddy Krueger's glove. Sticklers to movie details and the way it looks in the film, obviously we'll want to go in there with the paintbrush and add some much needed details to take this in its bland state and probably turn it into something that looks a little bit better. Either way, for all the critiques that I made over the course of this video, it's not a bad looking glove. And again, a good starting point if you want to customize it and make it look a little bit closer at the very least, it gives you everything that you need right out of the packaging, and it's much more affordable than if you tried to make the glove from scratch. And that's one benefit of getting this particular glove. It's not great, but at the very least, there's something to work with here. Today's Spookerific review, we were having a look at the Ruby's 2018 Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger Deluxe Glove. I say it's 2018, I just want to timestamp that, but it's pretty much the same glove that they release every single year. Will I actually still look at this in 2019 spooky spot? Probably as well. So you guys can stay tuned for that. Speaking of staying tuned, if you guys haven't already subscribed to this channel, make sure you do so. We've got a whole bunch of spooktacular reviews lined up over the month of Spottober. That's what I call October, by the way. Also, other videos will be coming your way as well. So if horror thing isn't your thing, don't worry. There's going to be other videos coming your way as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.